Hello, my name is Marco. I'm here to discuss with you the role of open source in education and also to present specifically one of our test workshops in robotics and AI. So for those of you that don't know me very well, I'm just going to give a little bit of background about myself. I did uh, computer science in my college years. And then I went through a um, PhD in robotics, which is uh, my passion nowadays. I did, um, I did work as a head of data science in a private academy uh, a few years back. So I've done quite a little bit of teaching and uh, right now I'm a software engineer at Open Robotics, which is um, my current job. And sometimes I collaborate with Falls Asia. I help them uh, run events like the big summit in Singapore, or I also uh, go around and give some talks or even do some workshops as the one we're presenting here today. So I want to give first uh, some stats about education, right? Even though um, education has been improving um, through the years, and if you see as wage has been improving, um, education has been improving along with it, and we all live better, and there's more people that has access to it. But there's still some numbers that we can improve there and, and there's a bit, um, there's quite a lot of, of people that are still illiterate in the world. And you can see here the numbers uh, by UNESCO and at least uh, around 50% of the people in the world still don't know how to read or uh, if you would put that in numbers, it's about seven, uh, 750 million, which is still a high number for me. So I think we can still do something about it, right? So I want to go through different um, different parts of the educational system. So I want to have a look at different aspects of it, uh, methods, uh, the cost of it, uh, the accessibility that is out there. And then I want to have a look at how FOSS can help in these fields. So it can help reduce costs, it can help ease the access, it can help bring in new ways and methods, and, and what are these, how, how we can achieve these things. And then I'll give uh, you guys the example of the robotics uh, workshop that uh, we've done, and then we'll run into th some conclusions about um, what we can do uh, to improve education in the world. All right, so a very uh, typical view of education is, uh, is to see education as uh, social progress, right? So in a developed country, uh, once I get to the age, I start attending school uh, from a very early age. At a certain point, I pursue a degree. And once I get that degree, I specialize in a certain field and I get a job in order to contribute to society, right? That is the basic view of education in the developed world in a capitalist country. Um, however, I will still look at education in a more complete way, not only in, in this um, traditional way. I think education should be able to produce knowledgeable human beings that are critical thinkers, um, humane and civilized members of society, and that are also able to expand their own knowledge into new fields, and they're also able to educate others, like explain themselves to others and, 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 and share their knowledge with other people. So I think this, these are certain points that education should, should also achieve to create a better society. 
So now let's let's have a look at certain general characteristic of the current education system. So the first um, the first aspect of education that we're going to have a look at is the the methods that are being used and I would like to point out that even though it's not the mo the most um, um, it's not used everywhere um, beside the research pointing out on good results on on active learning um, some some places they're still using um, the the passive learning method right and it's it's still a generic uh, a generic way of teaching uh, even though uh, the passive learning has given us a certain level of success um, that's probably why it remains unmodified since Roman times right so there's still um, this 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 um, tend towards passive learning you can see similarities in the picture uh, from a Roman, Roman class row on the left to a regular class from college nowadays and and it still remains the same right I want to give a good example of, of a strict application of this method and 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 I think Singapore is it's one of these examples um, I live in Singapore so I know a little bit about it and it's a very challenging city it's a it's a it's a thing it's a city that that uh, has uh, very specific ways of doing things compared to other countries and I've been discussing this with with some other uh, peers and and friends and we um, we agree on 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 this sort of sort of points I'm, I'm putting here right um, so we I, we can say that Singapore is is an example of how this traditional education is implemented, right? And the main focus on on Singapore education, it's it's good test results, and that is that that drives the whole education in in Singapore, and it will it will it will just decide your career as a student in Singapore. So. As a result, Singapore is usually the top country or or one of the top countries in educational tests in the world. So that is that is the the, the good results that we get. However, there is a bit of a lack of young entrepreneurs. Uh, even though, despite the government entities that really push for startups here, still um, some. Uh, young students will instead choose more conservative and stable careers aided by statutory hiring quotas so even though the the the, the means to to create startups are there by governments because of a more traditional educational system the, there is a, somehow a lack of innovation in 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 the society that that is produced by the educational system now let's have a look at the cost of education right which is also a very controversial topic the king of the cost of education of course is the United States uh, it's a place where the price of college have been increasing and is the highest in the world and in fact, you can see on the picture on the right that uh, student loans make up the largest chunk of U.S. non-house debt. Uh, so it's quite a bit um, in the U.S. However, besides the U.S. being the most costly, it's not where education costs is a bigger problem. So if we look at this comparison of um, countries related to the salary you can see that countries like Hungary Romania or Estonia they have to spend quite a big chunk of the average salary if they want to access education right so this high cost on education not only prevent people from basic learning but they also are um, preventing them 
to achieve higher educations, which is where um, humans become a more beneficial, um, more beneficial to society, right? Another aspect of education is accessibility. So it's very important to have information access and an internet speed is, is one of the ways of have information access nowadays, right? And this is something that we all have in developed countries, but there's undeveloped countries that are still lacking some internet speed. Um, access to video conference now, in especially in days of, of COVID, like we are this year, right? Um, it's very important. A lot of things going on online, like this conference, and a lot of a lot of classes going on online. And and I saw the other day in Hacker News a post by a Brazilian guy that was complaining uh, of the lack of tools to to assist on on low bandwidth video conference. Uh, and and they 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 couldn't ac access um, classes right. So there's 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 a lot of things that can can be done. Then there's also a lack of untrained teachers. There's lack of equipments and there's lack on classrooms on these developed countries. So a lot of room to improve in those areas. So what can uh, free and open source software and methods do? In these areas in terms of costs there's many things that can be done in terms of costs software licenses is one of the first ones that can come to mind very um, easy one if if I have a school and I have to buy software licenses for every single software that I run on my computers and the computers that students are using that's a high cost so open source license can help overcome these costs Open source textbooks, that's, an, that's another important um, issue. So textbooks also become a very uh, high cost for many families. And having them open source not only can reduce this cost, but can also make them easier to improve and update. I want to shout out the project OpenStack. So it's a, it's a project that is that is developing open source textbooks and materials and it's a very interesting project so I, I, I encourage you to have a look at it. Um, also the open source projects can can also bring local production so if we have open source have uh, open hardware uh, so can can also reduce cost by by producing locally or even uh, as we said with this, with the textbooks you can you can produce them locally also the ability to repair your own products like if you have if you have computers uh, or if you have software and they they're broken or they don't work you can also um, work on that so that also brings down the cost it avoids vendor locking so any any type of technology that you're using that is free and open source you can also uh, find someone locally to to help you fix it instead of having to 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 call someone from from another company. Wait, let me go back. Yeah, and finally, there's uh there's the possibility of reusing projects, right? Because if we are doing free and open source software, people can just work on top of your project, and and it's something that uh, it's easier for them to learn. In terms of accessibility, so free and open source software, it's always available. So we have materials available. We would have um, we would have code available. We would have uh, hardware design available. So everything is available on on the internet. There's software adaptability. So that means that we we would we would be able to adapt software to different. Um, needs right so I was talking about uh, uh, video conference software uh, if it's open source then then can easily be adapted for for lower bandwidth even though the main product was not designed for that right so that is an example and also it allows to learn through exploration right 
So open source gives you the, the, the whole thing for you to explore. So that enables students to grab whatever piece of software or hardware and, and be able to, to modify it by themselves, have a look at it, how it's done, and, and how, how they can improve it, how they can, they can modify it, how, how, and, and learn through, through, through the process. And it also enables communities. So this is a thing that can be also brought into um, learning and communities can expand the experience of, of learning more like in a, in a bigger sense than only your local community. So nowadays we live in a connected world and, and having communities beyond our local communities is very important. And it can also help you expand your knowledge on certain topics. And also documentation, as, the, as if we have documentations with open licenses, this can be shared, this can also create people that um, can improve them and, and can be also um, accessed as a lower cost, right? Now, regarding the method, <coughs> we should try to bring learning communities together, right? These learning communities ha have to be technologically enabled, have to be able to share information between them, and being able to co-author their learning experience. So this is, as I'm going through a learning experience, I should also be part of it, right? This is, this is the, instead of like just being a listener in a room, I'm also being an active, uh, having an active role in that, in that experience. Um, however, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a lack of, of evaluation that we should not compromise. So there's, there's tons of free information out there. There's tons of open um, information. And it's very nice nowadays how much information a, a student can get on the internet. But the, a, a student can still attend an MIT course uh, for free there's, there's almost all of them are online. However, the actual credentials will still be super expensive. So I think the force community has uh, has to try to provide means for evaluation of these concepts. So actual students that cannot attend an MIT class at the actual MIT and get and pay for those credentials can somehow get a similar evaluation even though if they were not at the at the place or didn't pay for the credentials so that is that is the thing that is an important point where where free and open source uh, communities can help to get accessibility into 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 learning so things that uh, more things that open source uh, can do it's that we can enable personal growth of, of the students we can uh, be able to eliminate barriers between between different communities and we should try to provide project-based learning to, to the students instead of just just learning things as it is having a target that can help them achieve a goal um, uh, force should also encourage exploration which is uh, given that the uh, the the source is already there and and the information is, is always open uh, we should also try to um, encourage group interaction. So with uh, uh, with these bigger online communities, should be able to basically uh, bring them on, on board new learners and and try to promote them in into some uh, more active learning altogether. So 
I will now talk about our robotics um, workshop, which was uh, done under the Force Asia Academy. So let's get into it. So the workshop is done with the board from uh, Force Asia. It's a project from Force Asia. It's called PS Lab, and it's mainly. It stands for Pocket Science Lab, and it's mainly meant for experimental things. So you can you can do different things with this board at different levels, right? So it has uh, many many things like a wave generator. It has a logic analyzer. Uh, you can connect sensors. You can do all these things with uh, with the Pocket Science Lab, right? So what we did is that we brought this piece of open hardware. And, and we connected it to the Mi Arm. So a Mi Arm, it's also an open design. Uh, it's a, it's a, an open design of a robot that you can cut in, in pretty much a wide uh, range of materials. Uh, we did it in wood because it was the material that we had available at the time. We attach four servos to it and, and we connected the, these servos to the PS lab, right? So what happens is that now the um, PS lab can be connected to a, to a cell phone or a computer and you should be able to run and move around your robot. So what we did is that we created a bunch of groups and these groups were able to collaborate together, follow a certain basic instructions on how to build this this robot and in the end they would they they were able to connect it to to a PS lab and then connect the PS lab to a cell phone or a computer and then work on it right so what did we achieve with it so with it um, we managed to bring robotics at a very low cost robotics is a very com expensive uh, field and we managed to bring a robotics uh, workshop at a very low cost to students, right? So that is a very good point. We also managed to get them to work into some project-based learning, so they could pro they they could work um, into uh, building something. It's uh it was it was based in groups, so they all collaborate and they they share their experience and they communicate with each other. They encor we encourage interaction between these groups. And they all they also an interaction with other groups from outside were was also encouraged. The good thing about this being open source is that it allows the workshop to be adapted to many different levels. So we have a full application. You don't need to learn how to program. You can just run the the, the robot with your own cell phone. However, if you really want to, if you really want to program the the whole structure of the of the robot you can just do it using a python library so that it's uh, or you can even modify the pantheon the python library because everything is open source you can even modify pslab and you can create your own board for um, uh, moving around the robot so also we believe these workshops uh, will encourage active uh, explorations and we bring uh, knowledge communities uh, around the world so we think it's a good experience so we ran this workshop in Tsinghua University in Shenzhen China uh, we also run it at Travel Maker which is a co-working space there and we have run it in uh, the Lifelong Learning Institute in Singapore with very bring success Finally, open source uh, can bring uh, learning costs down, can improve accessibility, can increment student interest, uh, can enable self-learning through co-authoring, as the license allows you to um, explore more, can enable community interactions through these amazing communities that we have in open source if we bring them into the learning space and CAMSOM um, should 
try to come up with evaluation processes. As I said, um, students should, if they have access to the information, if they have access to the um, learning experience, there the shouldn't be a need to, to attend a certain college or to pay a certain fee to be able to get um, a certification that proves the, their knowledge in that field. So yeah, I think uh, technology enables education and it's been proven that education information is more accessible nowadays. But I think um, as uh, an open source community, we can do much more in this field. So I hope the keys that I gave on this presentation can uh, encourage everyone to work in these fields and towards these goals. And thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, I think there's, there's a few minutes. Um, if not, you can always drop me an email. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, sorry, I was looking at the chat. Um, I, yeah, I do really think that's, um, that's the, the biggest challenge here. Uh, certification is is, uh, it's a big problem nowadays. There's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of information available, but still, as I said, the certification is is what what is is costing uh, most of the in, in terms of cost, right? If you talk in terms of cost, is is the is the biggest challenge that we uh, we have to overcome. I think um, they, there's no um, means for for to overcome this this issue and nowadays as i said you can you can you can attend even classes from stanford mit be top um, um, top universities but to get the certification you you must pay um like a quarter million dollars if, if you want to get like a degree on on any of those um i think uh, people can can get the this knowledge by themselves but we're still lacking the means the means to, to help um, and certify and verify that these people have the knowledge. I think that's, that's, a, that's a future challenge that we as a open source community um, should try to address in terms of the improving the learning, um, learning access and, and cost for, for other people. Thank you.